Today, we're going back to basics. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days here in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. We're doing it again. Today, from the ground up, I'm gonna show you how I pre-assemble models. I'm gonna show you the pinning techniques, the gluing techniques, the mounting techniques that I personally use. And we're even gonna apply base coats today. This will be volume one. We're gonna keep the series going. We're gonna do beginner's guide to getting a completed model. I'm probably gonna do three volumes so there'll be no shortcuts. As a quick reminder, there's gonna be a link in the description box below. We're gonna be doing another IRL class, painting class in Southern California with my Southern California partners, SoCal Games and Comics. It'll be a beginner's guide to getting your models done, just like today, but in real life. If you guys can give me a quick second to shout out a couple of clutch individuals over on my Patreon page. Yo, this week, we got Boonsaw, Auntie, Philip, Shane, Eric, John, Jake, that's my James, Scott, Kyle. Thank you guys. Came in clutch this week. I cannot do it without you. Patreon is the VIP access and how I keep the lights on. Let's do this thing, guys. Let's go over the tools I'm going to be using in this beginner's guide to the full assembly process. Exacto blade. You should have one. We're going to get ourselves a pinning set with a matching brass rod and bit size. Crucial. Hobby clippers. These are very important because they have flat edges instead of diagonal cuts. You should always have some Insta Set and Super Glue in your Beats Lab. These are going to be super handy. And a personal favorite of mine is Vallejo Plastic Putty. This is really useful in taking your models to that next level. And I love Extra Thin Cement from Tamiya. This is some good shit right here. All right, guys, here it is. Here is a sprue. There are some models on here. We are going to begin separating those models from the sprue. We are going to start by clipping bigger areas off before we do too much detail work here because there's lots of tabs holding these models in place. So we don't want to jack up the model by trying to wedge it into a weird spot that we can't quite reach. So we're just going to quickly remove some stuff and then we're going to clean it up on our desk. See, we're not even like taking him off maybe some of the sprue points, just maybe removing his section of the sprue because he shares this sprue with another character. There we go. So now we're gonna use the flat edge of the hobby clippers to get as close and tight as we can. Clip them off. Trying to reduce how much of a nub is left behind. There you go. No matter how good your clippers are though, you're always gonna have to do a little work. Always gonna have to use your hobby tools to clean up these mold lines. There we go. Got some sweet kicks. Get in there nice and flat. Clip, clip. Leaving as little bullshit as behind as possible. Sometimes I take this for granted, but I remember <laughs> not understanding how any of this worked one day. Long time ago. Big shout out to my patrons for suggesting a video like this. There you go. I don't even know how to narrate this. <laughs> All right, you see there's a big old mold line underneath him, his shoulder right there and under his elbow and gun. We're going to use the X-Acto blade here. I'm going to show you ancient Chinese technique. We're going to back scrape. Now, obviously, the shoulders, these are hard because they have a seam along them where they match up to the other shoulders and a nub right in the middle of them. This is always the worst. All right, we're gonna gently scrape the blade across the mold line with very light pressure. We're just trying to knock the mold line down. We're gonna have to remove some of the plastic on the left and right of the, the mold line, but you only wanna remove the minimum amount. You don't want to carve into the model to remove the mold line. That never works and that's always terrible. You will always leave a gouge in the model that you can't conceal, that you'll have to sculpt around. So when you're doing this, Always remove the least amount of plastic possible. You could always remove more. There it is. Same deal right here. This though, you are gonna have to carve off because it's such a big piece. Carve it off very carefully, don't cut yourself. And then scrape it down, knock it down. Make it look its best. 
The thing that ruins a nicely painted model the fastest is mold lines, seams, sprue shit hanging off the model. Definitely get them all nice, clean, and level. All right, we're doing a little bit of dry assembly so we can see that there's a mold line on his back here, on his leg. And we're saying, hey, look, you can't see it now. So that means we're not going to waste our time carving it down. Always work smart, not hard. So we are dry fitting him, trying to deduce our tactics for how we're going to sub-assemble this guy for the airbrush, what parts to leave off, how he goes together, what we can get away with, how can we paint this cape. These all go through my mind when I own an airbrush. All right. He's got some armor here on his thigh. Let's shave it down a little bit. He's got a mold line right in the middle. That's always classy. Boom. Light pressure. Blow off the excess. Wipe it off with your finger, whatever. Take a good look at it. Inspect it. Same deal right here on the melted gun. These are always kind of annoying. I swear to God, deflashing bolters. Obnoxious. But it's got to be done if you want your models to look sick. Absolutely monotonous and tedious <laughs> when you're working on an army. Working on one guy, not so bad. All right, let's do a little bit of drilling. We're going to just pile a little hole here, try to find the center, put a nice little hole in it, twist our exacto knife back and forth. This will be the landing zone for our drill, our smaller drill bit first, now that we have roughly center. But this is a melted gun, and so I want the hole to be bigger than this. So I'm going to switch out bits here in a second to our bigger one so we can widen that hole up. Boom. We got a little off center, so all I'm doing is pulling the drill to the side I need to keep the hole bigger on to make it nice and symmetrical. There you go. There you go. Just drill them out. Now, we are going to do the barrel of the bolter. It's much smaller, so be more precise and only use the small bit here. Having your barrels drilled out goes a long way to making your models look amazing. Too easy. All day, every day, get them, get them bolters drilled. All right, let's scrape down this cape. It's got a big tab here. We're gonna just do nice big sweeping strokes. We're gonna apply lighter pressure and harder pressure as we approach it, trying to smooth it out almost like we're painting a transition. All right, we're gonna hold the shoulders together so we can see how jacked up uh, the mold lines are there where we had to de remove the tabs. This always happens to me. So I like to hold them tight, scrape them down together to kind of level them out, make them match. But this is what this is what this is the kind of situation I use plastic plating for. This is the worst place. These clamp packs is the worst place to put a mold line. So I'm gonna use our Vallejo plastic putty, pull it out, whip it into a slurry, you can pretty much paint this on. You can paint it on, you can dab it on thick or you can smooth it out thin, water, do multiple thin coats. Basically what you're trying to do is fill in any scrapes, any gouges, anything that looks off level. I still haven't glued this together because we can't, we need to sub-assemble it, but I want to make sure to get this down before we paint it. Some of this will poke through because he does have a top shoulder piece, but we want to do our diligence here. Spend that extra five minutes, take it to the next level. Make it look its best. Just dabbing it on where it needs to be built up the most and then we grab a little water and we keep going. Thin it down, pull it away, feather it out. You don't want it to be too thick, it'll dry weird. But the cool thing is if you let this thing dry, it'll dry pretty rigid so you could actually use your sharp X-Acto blade and scrape it down again. Give yourself kind of a second chance. Too easy. But I find that this putty is one of the most crucial things to keep in your Beats Lab for creating that high level models. Get some awesome minis from Forge World or something and they got big seams in them. Hey man, just paint this shit on those gaps. Too easy. All right, let's use our plastic cement. Start gluing this guy together. Plastic minis go together so easy with this stuff. I like to put some on both sides, let it kind of melt the plastic up, then stuff, then shove them together and they will never come apart. So while we're applying this second coat over here, the first one has pretty much dissolved the plastic. Slap it on, that's on there for life, brother. <laughs> that's, like, that's one piece of plastic now. 
Real easy stuff. Now let's grab the combi bolter section, drop a little plastic cement all up in here, or plastic glue, I guess it's not plastic cement. Or is it? I don't know the terms. I'm not a, I'm not a glue scientist. Here we go. Shove this on there. This is for life, homie. <laughs> that that melted gun lives on that bolter. All right. Same deal over here. We kind of dry fit it, figured out where his weird chain fist goes. How can we possibly get it glued in here and still subassemble? So we did a lot of fuckery, held it up kind of weird, figured out how to get it in there. And then look, see, you can dry fit it. If you're careful, you can put it on still and then we can pull it apart because we need to paint these halves separately to get that cape looking at its best, the airbrush. Okay, we're dry fitting the shoulders on there so you can see a little bit of our seam shows through, which we use plastic putty on to clean up. Aren't you glad you took the extra five minutes? All right, this is how I like to mount my models. I have a lot of blank bases laying around. And even though I'm gonna use a resin base, I'm still gonna glue them to this, but I'm gonna wipe off the excess glue, spray a little Instaset on there, because Instaset actually makes the bonds brittle. And I want to be able to snap this guy off relatively easily, easy later. All right, now here we go. Since I have so many blank bases, I use these instead of corks most of the time. I'm going to drill a quick hole in it. We're going to mount a brass rod in there. And this is what we're going to use instead of cork because I have to go buy cork. I have thousands of bases. <laughs> we're going to shove it in that hole. It's a tight fit. One of my favorite things to do is grab my my clippers and use them as pliers. Gently push it through there. Boom. Look at that. Now we're going to pile it a hole right here in the center of his cape region on the inside, kind of angling it downward so we can get a nice set there. Like we want to be able to put it on that rod and still be able to airbrush it. Now we're going to put a little glue on the rod. This is all day, every day. This happens in the beat slab every day, practically. There we go. Now we'll be able to move it around, airbrush it without getting our greasy fingers on it. Too easy. All right. We can even use ancient Chinese bottle lids for mounting <laughs> elements of our bases. So we're going to take these shoulders, same deal. We're going to pilot a very shallow hole here because we're afraid to punch through. Always be wary of that. Always be careful when you're drilling plastic. So in this situation, we're going to use a little Insta set because the hole is so shallow that it might be a, an absolute bitch to mount it. So same deal. Grab this rod, get a little super glue on it, put it through the hole that we established in our bottle lid right here. You know, recycling is a big deal right here. All right. So put a little glue on this joint. Shove it in, <laughs> shove it in the hole. That simple. But here's my little trick. We're going to spray a little accelerator on this brass rod and just jam it in that hole because I don't want to just spray the whole piece. Like, I hate that. It's like an oil. And now we're going to jam this little dealy into that other dealy and it's going to instantly set as soon as we push it in there. Boom. Now we can spray this down without touching it. Get some straight transitions, some amazing fades on it all day, every day. But hey, no beginner's guide to assembly is complete until we prime that bitch. So we're gonna use some Vallejo Ghost Gray Surface Primer and some Airbrush Thinner. We're gonna run it through the airbrush. This is the only things I use Airbrush Thinner for, is primer. We're gonna pour some thinner in the base, get ourselves a nice amount of primer in the pot. You don't wanna thin primer down too much in your base coat application. That's a nice, strong polymer. We're just doing, now here we go. We're gonna raw dog it. First coat's gonna be kind of thick real fast. We're not going to linger trying to get it all into the crevices that are hidden inside of all those details. This is kind of our big base coat. It's going to be the strongest, thickest of the polymer. We don't want it to get built up, so we're not going to linger on details. Same deal. We're going to just quick once over on the cape, the fist, the shoulders, everything. Get it all done. Too easy. Even his top bracket that holds it all together, the super shoulders right here. Boom. Now this is one of my personal techniques. I like to get a nice thick base coat established with the airbrush so it's perfectly thin, no texture. You know it's gonna look its best when you start airbrushing your transitions in over this 
If you're gonna do single models like this, I always recommend airbrushing your primer instead of using rattle can, but I will use rattle can for mass production. All right, here's the trick. A little bit more thinner, a little bit of water. We're gonna make it even thinner than it was a minute ago, so it's actually kind of thin. This is what we're gonna start doing the second coat with. It's much thinner, and now we feel empowered to whip this into those details without getting too much buildup. That simple. So my second coat with my primer is always thinner than my first coat. That's just one of my things I do with my idiosyncrasies. I don't know if it really matters. It's just, I always try to have the smoothest transitions and the sickest, smoothest, silky paint jobs. And I feel like having a very clean primer helps with that. We need the paint to stick to something and I don't want it to be textured or rough at all. So we're just making sure to whip this thin version of it into those details, make them look its best. There we go. That's how I do it. Beginner's guide to getting my models ready for the painting process. Here he is, looking amazing. We're gonna paint him probably yellow, so volume two will be yellow secretly easy, or something along those lines. Anyway guys, play on players. Thanks for watching.